Most people don't actually know this, but the voluntary carbon markets, where carbon credits are sold by emissions reduction projects to buyers looking to offset their carbon footprint, they've been around since the 1990s and early 2000s. So these markets are not new by any means. You know, the carbon markets have been continuously evolving over time, but growth has accelerated, you know, especially in the last few years, with the markets gaining traction and participation more recently. And that's brought on increasing regulatory oversight and scrutiny as well. So in this video, we'll discuss what change is occurring as a result of the mainstream media's recent hit pieces on carbon credits, and you know, specifically against the leading verification body, Vera, and its red plus carbon offsets, and what's being done to change the perception of carbon credits. But before we talk about Vera, you know, let's discuss some of the new regulations and oversight boards being brought into the carbon markets. You know, the most recent development, and arguably the most important, has been the establishment of the core carbon principles by the Integrity Council for the Voluntary Carbon Markets, also known as the ICVCM. These core carbon principles will provide a framework for the industry to follow, you know, ensuring that there's a baseline for what's accepted as a carbon credit, you know, reducing the possibility of greenwashing overall. The principles will be agreed upon by hundreds of market participants, the list including crediting programs, project developers, academics, NGOs, you know, policymakers, and it goes on. You know, the ICVCM is being thorough and listening to all participants. So what are the rules the council is looking to enforce? You know, many of these are already agreed upon as important by current verification bodies, uh, but this will provide some new oversight as well. You know, something the market desperately needs to ensure that market participants feel comfortable that their credits are legitimate. Now, there are technically 10 core carbon principles, but they can be summarized as follows. You know, the principles for our carbon project developers are transparency and how calculations are made and documents that are presented, additionality, the idea that the project would not exist without carbon credit funding. The credits need to be proven to be permanent as well, you know, although this is still being debated how permanent is permanent really uh, and obviously you know we don't want double counting of credits and by contrast the principles that verification bodies need to follow are maintaining high standards of governance to ensure the quality of credits you know, upholding a registry to identify and track each credit and collaborate with verified independent third parties to ensure that credits are legitimate so the general rules for the broader carbon markets that they should be putting safeguards in place to ensure that projects provide a net benefit to communities and that they're contributing to the goal of reaching net zero. So this is a big deal for these markets. You know, I'm not typically a huge fan of grueling regulations, but these markets desperately need oversight bodies like this to step in and ensure that everything can be verified properly. You know, and this is certainly not the only organization that's stepping in either. In November, we had the International Organization of Securities Commissions, or IOSCO, step in and said that they were looking into regulating you know, the compliance and voluntary markets, or at least uh, seeing it anyway. You know, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission was looking into the carbon credit spot markets, saying that they could pursue similar actions that they were already taking in cryptocurrency markets. And more locally in the United States, the EPA is targeting current methane emissions uh, and they were exploring limiting carbon emissions as well, uh, but the Supreme Court had voted against expanding their authority there, you know, for now anyway. And the SEC and other organizations were looking to enforce rules around climate disclosures as well. So there's a concerted effort to bring climate-related markets and carbon disclosures to the forefront of public discourse. And carbon credit buyers will have increasing confidence that the markets will contain quality credits as oversight grows. But with all this said, you know, the voluntary carbon markets have a long way to go before they achieve substantial levels of credibility with the general public. You know, the mainstream media and radical environmentalist groups like Greenpeace you know, dominate what an average person sees about climate change. And by proxy, you know, they'll dominate how they think about it as well. And these entities are certainly not fans of carbon credits under any circumstance. You know, they view any attempt to offset emissions as a form of greenwashing, essentially. You know, in some cases it has been, you know, it's a relatively fair criticism, but there are plenty of valid projects that genuinely reduce carbon emissions. You know, I made a previous video on this article by The Guardian on Vera, a uh, link in the description, but the accusation there was that 90% of Vera's red plus carbon offsets didn't actually reduce emissions at all. You know, these projects create 
uh, these offsets by avoiding deforestation, by the way. Uh, and Vera disputed the Guardian's claims, but they've also decided to make changes to their methodology, as we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, but with that said, you know, there was quite a few issues with the sources the Guardian used to get their 90% figure, uh, which is far too high, in my view. You know, there is fraud occurring, no doubt, which is why we need more regulation. But their study had problems like, you know, not comparing similar areas and applying the same criteria to all projects. When every project is different in location and socioeconomic circumstance. The criteria the Guardian used was pretty simplistic in nature, uh, creating pretty wildly varying results. There was no peer review of one of the Guardian's main sources, and they misrepresented one of the studies used in their findings, uh, which actually found that Red Plus projects were relatively effective overall. So, you know, while I do believe that the Red Plus methodology needs revamped, uh, the mainstream media are portraying the markets in a far worse light than they should be. And it is good, in my view, that Vera is reworking the Red Plus program uh, because avoided deforestation projects have been the main target of scrutiny overall. And there's a high level of variability in how these projects are validated. So Vera has been feeling the heat from recent market attacks with overcounting of credits. So they're making changes to several methodologies. You know, the first being Red Plus, which they're consolidating into a new methodology that will be released in Q3. Uh, some of the changes include revised methods for projective deforestation rates, as well as requirements for the use of historical deforestation trends, standardized historical reference periods, uh, and new methods for estimating baselines. You know, potentially even crowdfunding data from trusted partners to determine the risk of deforestation in an area. So these are all shifts that we want to see to ensure the integrity of credits, as this is crucial for how the VCMs can be trusted overall. You know, another methodology that's been seeing changes is the long-standing cook stove methodology. And this involves distributing high efficiency cook stoves to poor rural communities and developing regions. And the new cook stoves you know, emit less CO2 overall and generally provide a better quality of life uh, for the families in these areas. You know, the issue is that this methodology has been seeing cases of overcounting of credits as high as potentially six times as many as the project was actually generating. So Vera is looking to crack down on this. And the new revisions to the cook stove methodology include revising baseline device efficiency, uh, average consumption numbers, and reevaluating emissions factors. And these changes will take effect on June 28, 2023. At that point, you know, new projects will have to validate their findings under the revised methodology. And an existing project will have to swap over once they reach a renewal period on the project crediting. Now, the last methodology of note seeing changes recently is Vera's rice cultivation methodology, which is being permanently inactivated. Uh, so theoretically, you know, these projects were reducing methane emissions through better rice field practices, but the methodology is on its way out uh, due to issues like a lack of monitoring for nitrous oxide uh, and a lack of standardized guidance for measuring methane emissions. Now, Vera is considering developing a new rice-specific methodology, uh, but as of right now, you know, there's no existing methodology for rice. Now, but in conclusion, you know, there is a massive disconnect between the public's perception of VCMs and how much greenwashing is really occurring. You know, a lot of the regulatory bodies stepping in are going to help bring credibility to these markets, which is desperately needed. But I think the disconnect I just mentioned provides an incredible investment opportunity to the few who are paying attention. You know, Base Carbon, the only carbon credit company I own, uh, which owns royalties on several carbon reduction projects, is trading at a severe discount to net asset value. You know, the entire sector is being priced in public markets like it's going to zero, quite frankly. You know, meanwhile, the company plans on being cash flow positive pretty soon, you know, with revenues projected to start mid-2023. If you want to learn more about Base Carbon, you know, I'll link a playlist of all my videos on the company in the description below. Now, but that's going to end the video here. Uh, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.